Okay, so thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So the first question I have for you is, what is your position in DuPont? And what are the some of the projects that you've worked on recently? Okay, so um, let's start off with a little bit of my background. So I'm a chemical engineer, and I've been working in pharmaceuticals for the past 17 years. So throughout my career, I've had a chance to work in a lot of different settings within engineering. So I've worked in manufacturing setting, which is, you know, their typical hard hat, steel toe shoes type of role where, where you're in a factory and you're making something. Um, I've gotten a chance to work in lab settings, um, developing new products, new molecules. Um, I've also gotten a chance to do a job where um, I basically traveled around the world helping pharmaceutical formulators, you know, solve their problems, which is a great job. Today, I'm actually more in a business role. So I am a global strategic manager, which means that for our business, um, I manage the strategy of how we're going to continue to grow our business. Um, what we work in within the pharmaceutical space at DuPont is we provide ingredients that are called excipients. So excipients are anything within, um, you know, if you're taking medicine, there's usually an active pharmaceutical, that's what's giving you that therapeutic effect. And then everything else that goes into that tablet or capsule or pill that you're taking is called an excipient. And there are many types of excipients. And so we provide a variety of polymers and ingredients that are used as excipients. Um, and actually, uh, one out of every three oral solid product around the world contains one of our products. So it's a really big business and it's, it's a lot of different products that we offer. So um, I made that switch to business about eight years ago, starting with like a, a marketing research type of role, which was a comfortable transition for me having a technical background because it was still very analytical. You're looking at a lot of data. Um, and then while doing that, I was learning a little bit more about the marketing side. And so over time, I took on different business roles and, and now I'm, I'm sitting in, in this type of role. So the question around projects is, is um, a little harder because I'm overlooking everything that's happening in our business. Um, I am leading a couple of projects where I'm working with technical counterparts to develop brand new innovations, which is what I used to do on the technical side. But now that I'm sitting in marketing, I ensured that there is going to be, you know, business viability and success by bringing this product to market. So I analyze, you know, what is the overall market size? What is the need? Um, are we going to be able to make money and be successful? if we introduce this product into the marketplace. Uh, I'm assuming that you studied STEM subjects in college, right? So how yes. was the transition from like purely chemical engineering to business? Did you have to do anything to supplement your um, education or like learn new skills? That's a really good question. So. Um, there are a lot of people um, that end up doing an MBA or, or going to graduate school for business. Um, what I love about STEM fields is that a STEM field provides a really solid foundation for whatever you want to do in your career. So I have engineering friends that went off to do, you know, to go to law school because they wanted to become lawyers or, you know, they, after engineering, they went to grad school to become doctors or, um, you know, they went off and, and did the business thing or did the traditional engineering um, roles. It, it was just the, the possibilities become endless as, as long as you have that solid background. So there are people that choose to do the MBA route. I actually never got a master's in business. So I have a bachelor's and a master's in chemical engineering. Um, when I made that switch, I did kind of look at it and analyze it and say, you know, do I want to do an MBA? Like, is it worthwhile for me to do an MBA? But at that point, I had been working in the pharmaceutical space for almost a decade. And so I understood formulations really well. I understood, um, you know, the, the products, the customers, the marketplace. Those are all places that I had been for the past 10 years. And so it was just learning 
the skills. And luckily I, I had a really good boss who was willing to spend some time with me and teach me, you know, this is how you pull together a strategy. And these are the things that you look at. Um, and just by doing the job, sometimes you learn even better than studying how to do that job, right? So for me personally, I never pursued an MBA, but um, I've been very successful in making that transition, learning on the job as I go. How did you discover your passion for chemical engineering initially? And were there any significant um, opportunities that you pursued in high school or college that really introduced you to that field? So I consider myself extremely lucky that I grew up in a family of engineers. So my dad's an engineer. Sorry, that's my dog speaking in the back. Um, my dad's an engineer. My brothers were engineers. My uncles were engineers. My grandfather was a mining engineer. And so I grew up in this household, in this environment where I, I can't say I knew like the exact things that my dad was working on, but I had a good sense of what engineers did. They were solving problems and different types of problems. And they were using math and science to do that, which were things that I always really liked. And so growing up, I was never asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was always asked, what kinds of problems are you going to solve? And what kind of engineer would you consider being? So when it came time to decide between the different engineering fields, um, you know, I always kind of wanted to think about becoming a doctor, helping people. Um, but I have to be honest, like I faint at the, at the sight of blood. So I was like, I will never succeed as a doctor. That is not a good path for me. And so the next best thing for me was pharmaceuticals. So I went into chemical engineering with a really clear understanding that my passion ultimately was to work in the pharmaceutical space as a chemical engineer. Um, and so I went to school and uh, as you were talking about different experiences and, and things, um, you know, around my sophomore year, I really started to get some interest in, you know, what's research like and what would it be like to go to grad school. And so I just reached out to a professor and that was doing really cool research. And I asked if I could start helping and doing undergraduate research. Um, and he was very welcoming. And uh, yeah, actually, a lot of professors will have, you know, if not a budget, they'll have definitely space for undergraduates to work in the labs, and they'll have tasks that are, are good for undergraduates to try. And so um, I did it, and I loved it. And so by the time I hit my senior year, um, my, well, he was my advisor at that time, he sat me down and he goes, listen, you've done enough research now, you've been doing research for three years, where you could graduate with a master's. If you continue on, take the master's classes, you know, wrap up your research, write your thesis, defend it, you could get both. And so in five years, I basically graduated with both my bachelor's and my master's together, um, because of that experience. And so I always tell people when they start college, um, don't be afraid to try new things, even your freshman year, sophomore year. Sometimes uh, students feel like they have to, you know, have all of these classes under their, their belt to be really efficient and effective and, and do this X, Y, Z. Um, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to try. So even as a freshman, as a sophomore, I really encourage, you know, people to, to go out, try new things. You might end up having an opportunity like I did, um, you know, to, to just get both degrees at once. Um, and the other thing I also did is I did internships in the summertime. And I highly, highly recommend uh, people to try to look for internships or co-ops or any type of work experience because when you're in the classroom, you're learning the theory behind, you know, engineering and these equations. But when you're actually put in the work setting, you understand what the day to day of that job really looks like. Um, and it's okay if you get an internship that you don't like, uh, because then you're able to start crossing things off your list, right? Like, oh, I tried that lab job. I didn't like it you know, working in the lab was not for me, great. So by the time you graduate and you're looking for a job, you can very clearly articulate, you know, I'm not interested in a lab setting, I'm more interested in, you know, a plant setting or a quality type of role or regulatory or, you know, you've gotten a chance to experience different things. And so 
that allows you to get a better sense of the things that you like and that you don't like and what that job is really like in, in real life, you know? Um, what would you say motivates you throughout your school years and your work life? I said, I, I've always had um, a passion for helping people. Um, and what motivates me the most working in the field that I do is knowing that every single day, what I'm doing in my job is helping people. So I'm helping sick people feel better. I'm helping, you know, whatever medicines they're taking be more effective, therapeutic, um, you know, be longer lasting in the body. I, I'm doing working on a bunch of different technologies that ultimately affect a lot of people in a very positive way. And that is also something that I find to be a very wonderful power of STEM, that these types of fields have an immense effect on a lot of people. So you can very easily find a job where you know that what you're doing every single day is going to very positively impact people's lives. How do you think the field of chemical engineering and pharmaceuticals has been changing to order in order to compensate for the pandemic? Oh, that's a good question. The pandemic's turned a lot of things on its head, right? Um, within the pharmaceutical field in particular, um, I think what it's really made us evaluate is what we call our supply chain. So when you think about supply chain is really you're thinking about where raw materials are coming from and how you're putting your products together and then getting them out into the marketplace. Um, and currently pharma the pharmaceutical space is very global in nature. So a lot of active pharmaceuticals are produced in China. Um, about 80% of generics that come into the US are actually produced in India. So there's a lot of, of global networking that happens within pharmaceuticals. And when this pandemic hit and it started to hit different parts of the world at different times, I think something that I can foresee changing in the pharmaceutical space is for sure, global collaboration will still be very important, right? I mean, look at even the vaccine development and how globalized that's become with different countries working together and, and trying to find a solution. But in order to better protect and ensure that we're able to have the pharmaceutical products that are needed for patients, I think we're going to start doing a lot more evaluation of, okay, if we have products coming from China, should we also have products coming from Europe? And should we always also have products coming from India? And you know, where else could we have a second supplier in case something happens in one region that doesn't disrupt the supply and it allows us to, to get you know, medicine to who needs it? Um, I would say that's probably one of the biggest things that I can see shifting and shifting and changing here in, in the immediate future um, as an aftermath of the pandemic. What would you say is the biggest way to stay on track for a career in STEM, especially as a woman? The biggest way to stay on track? Um, I would say there are two things to keep in mind, and maybe these are like tips and suggestions, but the first one is to find and build your community. Um, and they don't necessarily have to be people that look exactly like you, right? So um, for sure, it's helpful to have other girls in your class that you connect with, um, you know, and then you form study groups. All of that is fantastic. But know that even if you are the only girl, if there are a couple of other guys in your class that you connect with, form that community. Because as you start to form those bonds in the community, you can really help each other out. And in those moments of doubt, in those moments of, you know, um, disappointment, in those moments where you feel like, oh, maybe this wasn't meant for me, you need to have a supportive group around you that can say, listen, it was one test. It's okay to not, you know, do your best in one test. We'll get through it, get past it, keep moving forward, you know? So um, building your community is really important. Um, and keep in mind too that if there is another lone girl in your class and maybe in a, even if you don't fully connect with her the way that maybe you connect with some of the other guys, 
it's really important to reach out because she may be having trouble finding her community as well. And so if you can offer to be somebody else's or, or part of somebody else's community, that can make a really impactful and meaningful change for, for someone else as well. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, if you're attracted to STEM and, and you know, science and math and technology, um, you know, maybe that's something that comes naturally to you and you're good at, um, which was the case for me around like math and chemistry and, and why I chose chemical engineering. But the other really important thing to remember is that just because something feels hard, it doesn't mean that you weren't meant to do it. So there will be moments where you're gonna question yourself because I don't know, like this calculus problem is just really hard and I just don't get it. And it's, you know, it does not mean that you weren't meant to do calculus. There are just certain things that require a lot of practice, that require a lot of, you know, time and studying to really comprehend and really get. And so don't feel discouraged just because something is challenging. Um, there will be things that will be might that might be more challenging for you versus your friends and vice versa. But just know that 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 is not a signal suddenly that you know you shouldn't pursue STEM just because you didn't understand that one concept. You know, um, Albert Einstein's theory of relatively relativity only took him 20 years to develop. So think through that, right? Like some things are just naturally hard and it's okay. It's okay to, to experience something that's hard. Um, where, would, where do you see your field going in the next 10 years and what advancements would you like to see? So something that, it, um, you know, I always kind of joke about when it comes to pharmaceuticals is that people are always going to need drugs. So especially as the population is aging, um, you know, we're still working very hard to find cures for, you know, diseases like cancer and, you know, just a, a plethora of, of diseases out there. And so as far as pharmaceuticals is concerned, I think it's always going to be an industry that's going to be thriving, innovating, um, and creating solutions for medical problems. Um, and how we go about doing that is going to change. Um, so right now, there are a lot of things that uh, we call small molecules. Those are the traditional types of products that, you know, if you have a headache, you take ibuprofen or a Tylenol, those are what we consider small molecules. An area that's growing much more in pharmaceuticals now is biologics, and those tend to be larger molecules like protein-based type solutions. Um, and I see that as an area that's going to grow a lot faster um, than the traditional small molecule. Um, another area that maybe you hear about and you don't quite know what it means is an area that people that's taking up, it's a buzzword suddenly, it's this concept of personalized medicine. And the idea there is that everybody's bodies are completely different, right? And so uh, a medicine that may work very effectively for a group of people may not work as effectively for you or somebody else. And so the concept is to really understand somebody's makeup, like at a structural DNA type level, to be able to develop the right medications that are going to be most effective for that individual. So those are things that I think are going to grow um, and, and become more popular. And you're going to see a lot more, you know, products in the marketplace that are biologically based and, and tailored, I would say, for, for certain people and, and, and body types and things like that, too. And um, finally, if you could give one piece of advice to a student who wants to follow in your footsteps, what would it be? Um, so I think I already gave a couple of pieces of advice around, you know, building your community. That's really important. Um, and um, just knowing that because something feels hard, it's, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're not good at it and you, or you weren't meant to do it. I, I, I think those are, are really key to, to keep in mind. Um, another thing that I guess I, I think is important to keep in mind is to always keep your possibilities and opportunities open. So I think it's 
really inspiring when I find young people that have an idea of what it is that they want to do. So like for me, for example, I knew I wanted to do pharmaceuticals and here I am 17 years later and I'm still doing pharmaceuticals. So that's, it's great. It's great. If you know, it's totally okay. If you don't know as well, right now, 17 years ago, if you had asked me, do you see yourself doing a business job in pharmaceuticals? I would have said, you're crazy. You're absolutely out of your mind. I'm not going to do that, right? Um, but here I am, and I'm really loving it, and I feel like I'm doing something that's very impactful. And so I think another thing to, that's important to keep in mind is um, it's good to have goals and ideas of the things that we want to work on and the types of problems that we want to solve. That's all really great. But always really think through the different experiences and opportunities that you could have by trying something that comes your way that may not fit 100% of what you thought you wanted to do, but may be interesting enough for you to try it. So don't be afraid to try something, um, even if you don't have all the skill sets, right? Like, like I said, I, I stepped into a marketing role without ever taking a business class, without any of that. There's a lot of learning that happens as you're doing a job, you know, as, as you're trying it. So um, don't be too quick to close opportunities uh, that come your way. All right. Thank you so much. Those answers were very informative and inspiring. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good luck.